Let's have a little discussion about rake and trail. So rake and trail is a combination or a relationship between the angle of the forks and where the steering axis is and where your tires touch the ground. So that whole conglomeration of stuff is considered rake and trail. What's most important is not what rake and trail is by definition, but what it does. And what it does is keep the bike going straight. So even on heavy gravel like this, you can see the bike doesn't get kicked off. And the more I mess around with it, even at this speed, if I hit the ends, it continues, or the ends of the handlebars, it continues to go in a straight line. And this happens not only at lower speeds like off-road or on gravel roads like this, but also when you get out on the highway, the faster you go, the more stable it is. So even at these speeds, if I hit this, the bike will change a little bit of direction, but it doesn't just kick the wheel out sideways and then crash. That's what rate control does for us. As a rider, what matters is that you let the bike do what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to go straight. That's what it's engineered to do. That's the self-correcting tendency of rake and trail. And this way, when you're riding on roads like this that are loose gravel or with loose rocks, you just let the bike do what it's supposed to do and it continues to go back the track. And if you hit something like a, a rock or a log that kicks the wheel out sideways, if you're holding on tight, what will happen is, is when it kicks out the wheel, it'll turn, but it doesn't recover. Because the force and weight of the bike is enough to get the wheel to be kicked off center, but because you're holding on tight, you slow down its recovery. That's often when we fall down or like off, you know, when we're on the road, like pavement, a lot of times it, what happens is what's called out tracking. And out tracking is where you're holding on to the handlebars and it constantly gets this change. And then the wheels just sort of track all the way out to the side. And, and so that's what we have to be uh, aware of is that we're not the ones in control of the motorcycle. We're like a captain on a ship. We give suggestions and directions. We tell the bike, I want to go to the right. And when you say, please go to the right, and you hope that the bike listens to you and goes to the right. And that's the whole idea. But when you think that you have to hold on to the handlebars and that you're always muscling it around and that you're the one that's in that kind of control, you, you end up making things worse let the bike do its job we're touching the handlebars because the throttle's there if i'm going uphill i need the cruise control or i need to hold on to the throttle but when we're going downhill like this what i need to do is just let the bike do its thing i mean the clutch is here if i need to shift gears the brake is there if i need to stop the throttle's there if i need more speed but if i'm looking at just allowing the bike to be smooth and turn then i need to just let it do what it does. Now, now, the slower you go, the more you need to hold on, and certainly direct steering or counter steering is quicker and more effective than using lean or body position or neutral to get the bike to change. So if I lean to the inside, obviously the bike's going to track in. As I come down here, I can lean left and the bike will track to the left, and steering will also do that. But the more you practice hands off or, or just very light grip where you're just barely touching the bars and you're allowing your body to, to help give input to the bike and you're letting the geometry of the motorcycle keep you alive and stable and upright, the better off you're going to be. That's my COVID-19 short lesson on rake and trail. Hope you get a chance to go to the trails soon and try that out. Goodbye.